Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Voices of Recovery. I'm your host, Michelle Ike, and this is my book, How to Kill an Addiction, Recovery with God. In this book, I talk about how to break free from whatever binds you. And I also have 20 powerful testimonies who of people who have been set free with Jesus. So I'd love it if you check it out. But I love to interview people who have an amazing transformational story. And this week, my guest is Janice. Janice, welcome to Voices of Recovery. Welcome. Thank you, Michelle. Great to have you. And you and I have something in common. We are both contributing authors to the Unleashed, Rise Up and Roar, powerful testimonies of people who have overcome trauma. And uh, that's how I met you. And I love your story. And I can't wait for our audience to hear about it. But if you would just take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience. Awesome. Hello, everyone. My name is Janice Callahan. I am a mom to three amazing children, two of which are grown, um, and then one amazing little granddaughter. Beautiful. I love that. Well, when I first read your story, I mean, it was just like, wow. And then I reread it last night to prepare for today. But um, you actually were using drugs and you died. You had a powerful encounter with Jesus during that time where you were clinically dead. Uh, And so that's what I really want to talk to you about today. So if you could just kind of summarize, I know, I know it's hard to unpack everything in the amount of time that we have, but if you could let our audience know kind of the events leading up to that experience that you had and um, just share from your heart, you know, basically what happened that night. Oh yeah. Okay. So I know this is something that is not going to be foreign to people who've been in addiction. You know, um, I had um, my youngest was with a sitter. And so I couldn't wait to head over to uh, my friend's house that I used with. He was my boyfriend at the time. And um, I was just ready. You know, I was ready to party. I had been um, not hadn't used very much in the past three weeks. There was some trauma going on. that significant life change had happened about three weeks prior to this. And um, so that particular night, um, my littlest one was, was taken care of and I headed over and, and it was like the minute that I, I took the first hit. Um, I was using a very addictive narcotic at this time. Um, I had used it off and on for a long time. I was very, something that I was used to using. It wasn't anything new. There wasn't anything, Um, it wasn't anything that I didn't have experience with. So the, from the moment I took the first hit, something was different. Mm -hmm. I honestly do not know, Michelle, if it was, you know, laced with some other narcotic or what. Wow. Okay. So, so you could feel your throat starting to constrict, right? Absolutely. Nobody was in the room to help you. It sounded like the the boyfriend was out of the room. Right. You basically kind of, from what I understand, felt your your soul, I guess, separating from your body. Yeah. It was, it was like my spirit was separating from my body as my energy, my life, my, my blood was draining down to my feet. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't mistake the feeling of dying. Like when this was something I had never felt before. Um, this was not being overamped. This was not you know, doing a little too much. This was some reaction that was completely adverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you hear people say their life flashed before their eyes when they have these kinds of experiences. Did you, did you feel that? Of course. Yeah. I was thinking, wow, I am such an idiot. I can't believe I've done this to myself. Mm-hmm. I am. I, and also I was fighting for my life. I'm, I'm internally begging, please, God, please, God, no, 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 no. Don't let me die. Don't let me die. And there was just this, some part of me that believed that death was optional. And, um, so I was determined to fight for my life. Um, no medical invention intervention occurred. There was no EMTs called 911 was not called no mouth to mouth. I mean, it was, wow. it happened very rapidly. I'd say within about three minutes. Okay. So during this time, Janice, you basically, would you say you came face to face with Jesus? You encountered God? You Things kind of shifted from kind of feeling like you're losing your life to transitioning into the presence right. of God. And I know when you really have an encounter with God, it's hard to put words to it because words just yeah. don't 
<laughs> they don't yeah. measure up, right? But to the best of your ability, can you kind of share what that looked like for you? Right. So I closed my eyes here, opened my eyes in another realm. And before me was um, what I describe as just enormous, huge spirit. And the first thought that just came to my mind um, was thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross. Like I innately knew right. this presence mm -hmm. and I knew that it was too powerful for me to even have been in this presence without the blood of Jesus. Wow. Amazing. So, yeah. Okay. And it's radiating love. Mm. I love that. I, the way you described it in the book is so incredible. And I will let our audience know how to get the book because not only do they want to hear your story, but they want to hear the other stories of the women who have overcome on yes. trauma as well. But you actually had a conversation with, you would call it spirit, God, Jesus, or I mean, the Trinity. Uh, how, how would you, what, what name would you give this just spirit? Abba father. Abba the father. father. Okay. The father. Yeah. Abba father. And that's daddy God. And that's a term of endearment and that's a term of intimacy. Right. Yes. So yes. let me ask you, do, did you at that time, would you consider that you had a relationship with Jesus or not prior to this? Yes. Encounter? Yes. You did. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And then, um, uh, you know, you actually have a conversation with them. Um, you asked, you were basically begging to go back. So you said you had a kind of an inherent knowledge that you could go back. And mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing that you're thinking of your children, right? What's going to yes. happen to them if I transition to heaven? Um, but you're begging for your life. And, and you asked, Father, what do I do? And do you remember his response? Oh, I'm looking out at all these faces and they're looking at me and I lean towards him and we're in a second environment at this point. Um, and I lean into him and I say, what do I do? And his response was so, it, he said, love them, mm -hmm. love them. And so, them meaning everyone probably, right? Yeah, all of these people. These people were people that were alive on the earth. Okay. These were not people who had passed away. Interesting. These are people. Yes, these are living people by the millions, standing shoulder to shoulder, looking up, waiting. Wow. I love that. So, okay. So you have this encounter with Abba Father. Um, and you ask him this question. And this question, just like, I, I'm just kind of marinating in this, Janice, because it's so powerful. You said to him, what do I need to change? What did he say? He said nothing. And what I interpreted that, like what I knew he meant was so much more than that. Nothing as in, I can't change me. I can't change anything. Mm -hmm. But I knew everything was about to change. There was no question that I was, I was, but everything was changing everything. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we're going to park, park here for a minute, because like I said, this just kind of rocked me when I read this. So when God says one word to you, okay, one word, uh, we can just unpack and unpack and unpack that one word because we're unpacking it with him and he's giving us more and more revelation. What our mind which our minds are very tainted with religion. Okay. Right. If most of us were to go and ask God, what do I need to change God in our mind? I know for me personally, it would be like a book this thick. You know what, Michelle, you need to do this different. You need to stop doing this, start doing that. You need with this person, that person, this relationship, this habit, blah, blah, blah. And on and on it goes. And that we would just feel so condemned and so overwhelmed that we're like, I can't do that. I can't do that. So I'm not going to try. I'm not even going to try to come to God because he's so hard to please. And I have to make all these changes, which I've tried to make a hundred times and I can't do it. And so I just give up. You know what I'm saying? Like that's. I hear you. Yeah. So let's talk about that because it, this is just a message that so many people need to hear. 
and and Michelle, at this time that I was having this experience, if I can with you a little bit, um, I was personally going through a lot of confusion surrounding my sexuality, mm -hmm. sexual preferences, fetishes, and then the addiction and the obsession with money. There was so much going on in my life at this point. Right. Um, I was chasing highs of every single kind. There was nothing that I wasn't trying. Mm -hmm. And it all stemmed from a place of deep, deep hurt yeah. and just not knowing like where I belonged. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not knowing where I belonged, not really knowing who I am. Mm -hmm. And when he said nothing, honestly, it was like, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. that I don't have to try to change all of these things. And I also meant, well, what do I need to change? Meaning like, what about this story and how I ended up with you? Do I need to not tell anybody? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, could that be a secret? Did I have to be forthcoming with that information? How embarrassing if the answer is yes. Right. And and then really as I began unpacking that, but it was in that environment though, just so you know, we have in that environment, it's like we have all of this wisdom and knowledge, like it's just there. Mm -hmm. And so what was amazing was that he said nothing. And that meant he would take care of me that, I would be okay as long as I was true to him. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. It is so incredibly powerful because all of those things that you were doing did change, but it wasn't because yes. God told you to stop doing this and start doing that. It was because you encountered his love and you and I both know Janice that when we are looking for love in the wrong places, when we're looking for self-medication through substances and, and all the things we're trying to fix the pain inside. We're trying to yes. deal with the hurt and trauma inside, right? The best we yes. know. How. And when we meet the father face to face, meet the father, look into his eyes and see his eyes of love. Then that wounded place begins to heal, or maybe it gets healed instantaneously. And then all that other stuff we were trying to do to fix it and medicate it and make it feel better are no longer needed. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. And Thanks, Lord, it was so beautiful because as I was walking out, it was a spontaneous on the addiction and the sex stuff. And as I was walking that out, he began to woo me and court me mm. and give me new, fresh desires, things things that I hadn't done in so long, but he began to like rebuild me from the inside out. And he began yeah. showing me my identity in Christ. Amen. And it was so profound and changed. It changed. I mean, it changed everything. Amen. You know, you, you saw your worth and value in his eyes. And when yes. we see that in the midst of our mess, come on, you were overdosing. Yes. You were overdosing, right? And right. right there in the midst of it, he met you, he, he rescued you. He showed you your, your true identity in him. And, and he, you know, he just transformed your life. So this is so powerful. And, you know, I can almost hear the religious voice in my head because I'm like on this journey of losing my religion. Right. And it's all about I hear with God. It's all about the pure love of the father, despite what we're doing. Right. Despite our behavior. Uh, we're not going to fix our behavior until our identity changes to line up with that. And I could just preach on that forever, but I want to stick, <laughs> stick to your story right now. Um, I can hear that religious voice saying, oh, so you don't have to change anything. So it's okay for you to use drugs. It's okay for you to, you know, uh, have these sexuality issues. It's okay for you to X, Y, Z. That's not the point. Mm -mm. And, and Paul addresses this in Romans six. He's like, you know, should we just go on sinning? So grace can abound. No, when you encounter the love of the father, that's what you've been looking for your whole life. That's what your heart has been desiring. And when you find it, you don't need all this other stuff to fulfill you because you now have the real thing. 
Yes. And all of that other stuff. And that's just it. It was uh, this revelation that everything else was the counterfeit. Mm -hmm. It was the cheap knockoff. Right. And it wasn't fulfilling me in any way. And being a child that grew up, uh, I was, you know, born in 77. I went through this period of time where like, you know, I just remember certain things like radio shows, TV shows, all of these things were, were feeding me and the music feeding me all these other identities. And it was like, that had to be the best way for me to describe it is those were ripped away during the dying process. And then he implanted the truth during the experience and he's been truly renewing my mind by the washing of the water of the word every since um you know i'm so i'm so fortunate and so blessed and this this message is so important because as a lot of women in addiction are mothers who who just they love their children but they just can't you know get free And, and here I am, I had this experience after trying the church, we're going to get back into, I'm going to get back in church. I'm going to do the church thing. And it never, ever set me free. Right. And so with that being said, um, it was that healing process, that soul care. He was so gentle, Mm. so gentle with me. And when he said, you know, love them. He was gentle when he said that, but it was, it was no doubt like a command, Um, but he didn't have to yell at me. He didn't have to berate me, degrade me and humiliate me. He just said, love them. He just said nothing. And like you said, then we unpack all of those other things that are in that experience. And it was so, so to, to be fully known is what we really all want. Right. And he knew me. He knew me and he loved me and it was just, yeah, I I don't even still have the right words for it. I can go and I, and I tend to get pretty passionate about this because what he showed me during that experience is that we're spirit, soul, and body, Michelle. And so I was living from like a carnal mind, truly. Um, And then after this experience, he began teaching me how to live and remain in the spirit. Mm. Yes. And so in that place, we don't want those things. Right. And that's where they life are. is. That's where life is. Living yeah. carnally leads to death, right? This yes. is yes. six, seven, and eight, back to that. And, you know, carnal living doesn't necessarily mean you're sleeping around and using drugs and whatever, you know, whatever that looks like in our back to our religious mind. It could mean um, I'm going to try to meet my own needs, I'm going to do things my way right? That's carnal living. And so it can look, it can look bad and it can look good, right? Like being a workaholic, that looks good. The world accepts that, you know? So you mentioned that you knew as a mom that you needed to make some changes in your life and you tried that, you tried going to church and, and these are the things that many, many people do, right? Um, and, and a lot of it is for the sake of their own children. Like I need to get my act together and I can, I can, I can relate to that on a certain level with, with my experience if you know my journey was different but it's the same type of route and like you said we need to be known as to who we really are and accepted for who we really are and not get on this treadmill of going nowhere to try to fix ourselves or clean ourselves up because like then god's gonna love me no he loves us right now in the midst of it but then it's it's not like he's gonna leave us there because when we encounter him we (laughs) his love transforms us. Like you said, from the inside out, it just does. It does what we need. We're back to our creator. We're back to our original purpose is to know him and walk in relationship with him period. But we let so much religion and condemnation and the enemy, like, you know, you're so dirty. You're so filthy. You've done X, Y, Z. How could God love you? And we believe these lies that keep us separated from him when all the whole time he's saying to come to him. With all your junk. (laughs) Come to me with all of your junk. And there wasn't any condemnation. I was vividly aware of what I had just been doing and where I had been and, and what I had done earlier in the day. Like it was so like in my mind Mm -hmm. and he's so powerful that if he wanted to condemn me, there'd be nothing I could do. Right. But he didn't. Yeah, he didn't. And I truly believe 
that it was my faith in Christ Jesus. I believed since I was a little girl, I tried different denominations. Like I, I, I went to, I don't know, 30 different dom- denominations throughout my life, trying to find like, where's the real message? Where's the real message for somebody like me? Who's just a hot mess express. Where is that message? And so with that being said, I just, I couldn't find it. I found some amazing pastors and preachers. Don't get me wrong. It was the soul care that I was missing out on. I needed that. We're all different. Okay. We're, we're, some people need the turn and burn message. Apparently some people need the hellfire and brimstone message. Apparently I don't, that's not in any way motivating for me. Right. I just freeze well, and don't and, and when that hellfire and brimstone message is fear-based. Mm-hmm. And so as long as you're in fear and that fire, so to speak, is stoked, like it's just going to keep you in fear. Right. And yet, the Bible says the perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. Right. So when we encounter perfect love, you know, we, I, I don't know that God wants us to be afraid of him necessarily. But when we have reverence for him and respect for him and honor him and be in awe of him and a real good way to do that is to come face to face with him and go, wow, you know, um, it's just so transformative. So, okay. So you, you, you come out of that, you, you know, you, you come back into your body basically. And again, no one helped you. No one, right. no, no paramedic, nothing. Your boyfriend didn't help you. Um, And then, you know, you walked out of there and your life was different and one, God spared your life. So you, you know, you get back to go be with your children. They didn't lose their mom. You're not a statistic, you know, unfortunately we know that, that people are dying every day and it's so tragic because it's so unnecessary. Um, But, you know, and it's like, probably you're probably on like this high, right? A, 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 A spiritual high with God. Um, but to then, say the least, <laughs> yeah, to say the least, that's an understatement. <laughs> I went to heaven and I met face to face with Jesus and saw faces of a million of people. Life is not going to go on. No, as the status quo has changed. But you also wrote about there was kind of a, a negative side to that, and in, in the sense that sometimes you know we're so heavenly minded and then we have to like live out things on this earth. Talk a little bit about that, um, if you would, Janice. Yeah, I just wasn't able to live things out on this earth. After that experience, I realized how everything that's in this world is really just a distraction to keep us from discovering who we are. So the, the death process, I believe, strips us like the ego death was stripped. So I didn't have that selfish ambition. I didn't have what we call on earth, that grit, right? What that that desire to push, 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 and be known for my personal accolades since the death experience, all that's really mattered was Mm -hmm. making him known, sharing him. And so it made me unemployable. It made me, (laughs) um, Mm. yeah, (laughs) I think four jobs let me go for proselytizing, Mm. you know, Mm. and, and that's just the gift he gave me. Um, it didn't feel like a gift when I was getting let go, but, but, you know, he just, when he, when he, my personality type and he knows how I'm going to react to this reaction, like it's been five years and, and I'm just now starting to understand temperance on a deeper level because Mm -hmm. while I was no longer out partying and having a good time, all I can cared about talking about was heavenly things right and so not everybody's ready for that you know um (laughs) to say the least um it also made um like one of the things that I realized was how many filters had been like adapted I had adapted all of these different filters for different environments masking is maybe what we can call it so like when you're at work you only talk about certain things when you're at church you talk about certain things when you're with this friend you talk about certain things but all of that was like wiped away and so suddenly I'm everything this the condition of people's souls matter so much to me that I'm talking to people about everything and with no filter and I don't believe he wants us filtering and censoring ourselves right to truly move in the Holy spirit means we don't. Yeah. We just flow. Amen. That's so good. 
I love that. <laughs> you got fired from five jobs. Well, you know, we understand that God is our provider. And so, you know, if that's the case, then just step out. But, you know, I, I kind of call that like the chameleon, right? I'm going to change colors based on my environment, not be who I am, take it or leave it and just leave it at that. This is who God made me. This is the message he's given me. And you and I both know that not everybody's going to like that. But, you know, if there's that one person that's that's seeking, that God's drawing, you know, that is going to make a world of difference for that individual. Yeah. And he cares that much about that one individual. He does. He left the 91. Yes. That's so beautiful. I love that. Well, um, let's shift a little bit, Janice, and talk about the upcoming conference that you and I are going to be going to. Yes. It's in Little Rock, Arkansas, April 19th and 20th. And um, this is the Rise Up and Roar 2024 conference that we are going to be speaking at with Mandy Lee and other beautiful women who have amazing testimonies. So um, if you could just share a little bit about that, and I'll definitely let our audience know how to get registered for that because it is free and there is a virtual option, but we'd love for you to come in person so we can give you a hug. And uh, I think just being in the atmosphere is going to be super powerful. But talk a little bit about the upcoming conference, if you would. I completely agree. And Mandy has been working. Um, you know, she's very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So I know this is going to be a very, very amazing time. Um, from what I understand, there's actually going to be a panel um, where myself and other people who've had near death experiences or death experiences will be sharing what we've learned mm. during those experiences and the revelation that we continue to receive since those experiences. So it's going to be a I would say a precious time for anyone who wants to experiencing something, experience something that, mm -hmm. that maybe they couldn't get at uh, any, well, I know it's not a maybe it's something that you can't find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And it's been strategically put in divine place by the Holy spirit. Amen. I'm so excited to be part of the book and part of the conference I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see how people's lives are going to be changed. And Janice, I've talked with Mandy about this. She and I are both coaches and we can't change anybody. Okay. No, nope. can't change anybody. I can't change anybody. Right. Um, I couldn't even change myself. Right. Neither right. could you. But an encounter with the father. Boom. That's it right there. An encounter with yes. the father and receiving his love and catching a glimpse of how wide and how deep and how far is the love of God. That is what transforms you. Yeah. And what keeps us from that is our own beliefs, our own lies that we're not worthy. Uh, maybe other people have treated us badly, abused us, neglected us. Uh, and so we believe these lies from the enemy that we're not lovable. And right. that is simply, you and I both know that that's not true. God reached down into my mess and redeemed me. He reached down into your mess where you were really having a crisis, almost ready to die. And he saved you and he saved you for a reason. And he saved me for a reason. And so I just can't wait to be in this atmosphere of light and love and sharing our testimonies. You know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb, that's Jesus, and the word of our testimony. And when we can share our testimonies with other people and show what we've gone through, I mean, this is the reason I do Voices of Recovery, because I want people to watch and listen to this and say, wow, if God could do that for her, he could do it for me. Yes, and that absolutely. is 100% true. You know, he, he loves all of us. You caught a glimpse of those million people and God told you to love them. Yeah. And they're not always lovely and lovable right? I'm not always love lovable, but he loves us no matter what. And that is just so incredibly powerful. So um, I will post this in the links, but if you want to register or learn more about it, it's rise up and roar 2024, the numeral 2024.com rise up and roar 2024.com. You can attend for free in person. Uh, we don't want anybody to be prohibited from attending. And you can also watch virtually and there are going to be powerful speakers and encounters and breakout sessions. And it's just going to be such a fun time celebrating what God has done in our lives and letting people know that he can do the same for them. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So well, excited. Girl, I can't wait to see you there and give you a big hug. Thank you. But thank I thank you. you so much, Janice, for 
being our guest today and for sharing your story because I know it's it's changing people's lives and it's drawing people into encounters with God. And yes. that's where we find transformation. Yeah. His love. Absolutely. All right. Well, God bless you, Janice. I will see you at the conference April 19th and 20th in Little Rock. Awesome. I encourage everybody to join us and we'd love to meet you as well. So thank you for watching this episode of Voices of Recovery. We're creating a safe place where people can go on their journey with God. And if you're new, give us a like or follow and please share this message out because there's somebody you know who needs to hear what Janice had to say today. So Janice, thank you so much. God bless you. We'll see you soon. God and bless you. Thank you to our audience. Thank we'll see you, you next time on Voices of Recovery. Right. Bye-bye.